Yeah, I think Dr. P. Okay, so we were talking about solids. We talked about crystalline and, am and amorphous. What's the difference between the two? Uh, yep, and uh, we said we study crystalline more. Why? Does that mean there's more of them? No, there's actually way more amorphous than crystalline. It's just easy to understand. Okay, uh, we, did we discuss single crystal yet? Okay. We might shorten crystal to extal. I'll switch between the two sometimes. Have you seen that before or no? Okay. Um, what do I mean by a single crystal? Go for it. You, whatever way you want to operate, I don't care. If you want to yell it out, go for it. Right. So if you've ever synthesized something, you've made something, do you only ever have one crystal? Okay. Um, I'm going to run down the hall and grab a mineral real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have some crystals. Which one do you want? Take it. Which one do you want? Okay. Not the fireball. The fireball's mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you knew it. You ever know what that, here, you get two, because you got left with that. You got left with dumpy selenite. So if you look at those crystals or minerals, Taste, yeah, taste them. See the level of hardness? You can do all those things. Does anybody have a single crystal in their hand? How do you know? Visually by looking at it. Because you can visual, I need a better description than that, Lydia. Yeah. See sheets, you see imperfections. You see points where um, two crystals meet. So, a single crystal, like we just discussed, was um, a pure periodic system. So a single periodic structure. Here you can probably see a couple single crystals within your mineral. Right? Maybe not, uh, Joe, you're holding fluorite. That one is kind of hard to see, but if you shine a black light on it, you can definitely see the single crystals in it. Um, that one I think is uh, tiger eye. And like you can see that grain versus that one definitely, right? So where the two single crystals meet, or more than one single crystal meet, that's called the grain boundary. Does that make sense? Oops, I'll just do axles. So that's where they all meet. I'll bring in more crystals eventually, too, that we can look at. Um, these systems that you guys have, they're not single crystals. What type of crystals are they? Yeah, they're polycrystalline. And those are aggregates. of smaller and differently oriented uh, crystallites or grains. 
I wish I had my bismuth with me. I smelted it with my niece. We had a bunch that was in the lab and we were gonna throw it out. So I have a furnace. Maybe we'll do it sometime. It's really cool to watch. You heat up the bismuth enough to get it hot enough. You disperse it. You can do it on a um, stovetop too and you get different crystals that form. And depending on the layering, you get wild different colors. That one's really good because you can see the grain boundary is very easily. The one that Lily is holding is selenite. Can you pat, you've looked at it, can you pass it to other people so they can see it? That one has distinct grain boundaries where the crystals are actually just running straight up and down. So it's easy to break too. I have a big chunk of it that's sitting in the lounge. Yeah, but you see definite like the different grain boundaries, right? Does anybody know why this happens? Right. Yeah. Yep, that's typically what happens. You see the crystal and you grow it, and it will grow in different directions. Pass that, pass that over. Dime, look at it. Okay, so um, all of you guys have that. Some other examples of this uh, solar panels. Solar panels work as polycrystalline systems. It actually is helpful because it allows them to absorb a wide range of wavelengths rather than one specific wavelength and metals. Um, we're going to use the word defect a lot too. What's a defect? Imperfection. Yeah. Imperfection. In, is it in or in? I am perfection. There we go. You are perfection. That's how I feel. I'm perfect. So it's an imperfection. Um, this imperfection, well, we'll describe more of those defects later. And then uh, we, you guys are familiar with this one because you needed it. How did you define coordination number? Well, you got it all right. Mm -hmm. Nope, Ligon, ligands, ligands, terrible. Yeah. Ligands, ligands are very, could be utilized in coordination number, but we're not going to use that term in this class too often. Any ions or molecules are coming off the central half? Or the closest neighbors? Yep. Yep. Nearest neighbors is probably better because connection gets hairy. And um, we have, well, it can be. We have to extend our idea of a bond and what a bond truly means. Um, so how many uh, atoms and molecules surround an atom slash molecule of interest? Okay, so let's look at an example. We're going to try to draw out sodium chloride, or at least the unit cell of sodium chloride. Uh, I'm going to use a couple different colors, which you may not have. Um, one thing I would highly suggest in this class is to bring colored pencils. <laughs> It'll be colorful and nice. Okay, what color do we want the unit cell edges? White. White? Okay. You can change all of those colors too in Avogadro. Yep. 
Yep, it's terrible. So in my grad group, if any of them are watching or listening, my, I had to be the one to look over everybody's figures because besides myself and Ava, everybody was colorblind. So they would have the most horrible color schemes together. And they would never get why we would be like, like puke green and bright pink aren't good colors next to one another. And they'd be like, they're different. <laughs> <And it's laughs> Zach's now a professor at UB who does bioinformatics. So that's why. Chem informatics. Okay. Um, does anybody know what type of uh, structure? So uh, which, one, which one do we want to look at? Uh, so NACL has, anybody know what type of lattice? Okay, go for it. Simple. It's not simple. Base. Yep, base. Oh, wow. Centered, I'm going to erase this one. Uh, it is still a cubic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes shortened to FFC. Oh, why FFC? It should be FCC. There we go. Um, what is the coordination number of a single NA plus I? You're right, but let's draw it out. That's okay. You can run to the punchline. Let's get there. Okay. Um, you can pick different points in which to make this lattice, right? Because really, a crystal is really cool because it has such good translational symmetry. You can move wherever you want in the thing. And it means the same thing. What do you, what ion do you want at the edge? You want chloride? Okay, I'm gonna show chlorine and green. Which one's gonna be bigger in size? It's gonna be chlorine, why? Right. Oh, doesn't the periodic table, what's the periodic trend as we move from left to right? Yep, it gets smaller. Should this be smaller? You were right. You're right. It has a negative charge on it, right? So it expands out a lot. What happens with that sodium? Positive one charge, so it shrinks. So yeah, you're right. I'm going to mess with you a lot that way. Um, the other aspect to it is, is uh, we're going to talk about oxidation states a lot. I really don't like oxidation states, and we'll figure out why. They're really kind of a bullshit thing, but they worked so well for such a long time, they just keep hanging around. Okay. So if we got a chlorine atom, or excuse me, ion, excuse me, here, CL is green. Where else do I need them? Each, corner. Each of the corners, definitely. What type of structure is this one? Simple cubic. Not what we need, right? What do we need? Yes, yep. So we do need so we do need sodiums too, <laughs> not wrong, um, but we need it to be face centered, right? So what? How many more chlorine ions do I need? Six. Six for the six different faces, right? We have that one out there, one up front, one in the back, one along there, bottom, and top. This picture is already looking confusing. 
That's why visualization software is fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Aiden, everyone responded, we needed more chlorines, and you said, we need sodiums. You're exactly right, we do need sodiums. Okay. Given the nature of sodium chloride, where do we need to start plunking sodiums? In between. Mm -hmm. In between each of our chlorines, because right now is this structure stable? No, it's incredibly unstable. A bunch of negative charges packed in one another. You will never find that most of the time under ambient temperature and pressure. I'm trying not to lie to you guys as the best I can. Okay, so where should we plunk one? Yep, so one there, which means how many more do we need in this, this bottom plane? Yep. Okay, what do we need, where do we need the next ones? Mm -hmm. One here. So how many in this plane where those four chlorines are? Yep, there's four in total, one at each of those edges. And then what about in that top crystal plane? Okay, your picture might not be as good. And you may look back at your notes and say, what the hell was I doing? I do that every time I draw a crystal. Okay, now let's, what, what type of solid is this? What type of bonds are here? Ionic-ish. Talk more about that in a little bit too. Am I missing anything? We do need one in the very center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, which which ion did we care about? Na plus. Do we? Does it really matter in this system if we focus on an Na plus or a Cl minus? No, because there's translational symmetry here, and we could just pick a different box. Okay, let's try to draw how many are coordinated to this thing. I'm going to use uh, red, blue, and orange for my different directions. Okay, so we're going to do, uh, we'll have X coming out. Y going that way, Z, Z going this way. Which one is probably the best to focus on for the coordination number of all of the different sodium atoms? Why? Yeah, then you don't have to imagine another unit cell over here, 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 and here. However, what I want you to be able to do is to do that. It seems like an impossible task right now, but as you start to do it, it gets easier. Okay, which direction do you want to take first? Z-axis, okay, that's the easier one. Um, that's the center one, correct? So it's coordinated to that chlorine. Wow, I didn't draw that very well. Which direction do you want to take next? That's an awesome shirt, Lily. I'm just realizing it. <laughs> Dr. P's got to love it. Okay, which direction next, X or Y? Okay. We're gonna connect along here, here. And then finally, 
X, which is annoying because it's coming out towards us. That guy. Yep. Do you feel like you can see the amount of atoms coordinated? Okay. What is, uh, what's the coordination number then? Yep. Okay. My question to you is, is this sodium only impacted by those six chlorines? Does it experience any other forces from anything else in that unit cell? What, el what other forces does it experience? From? The other possible. Yeah, it will experience repulsive forces from all the other sodium atoms that are near it. Not as much as that initial um, electrostatic interaction between those two. Is that the only thing it will experience? You got the next sets of unit cells that expand out further and it will feel effects from all of those things. So a lot of the ideas that you have about molecules need to sort of die. But a lot of them can be of use later. Okay? Everybody feel okay with that? Okay. That's partly why. Um, they're stable because of all of those interactions, but also thermodynamic considerations make it happen, basically. Um, there are also other things we'll talk about in terms of stability. Like nature really doesn't want stuff to be a magnet, but we have magnets. Um, sometimes you just get stuck with what you're given. It's like why I'm the shorter of my uh, two brothers. I don't really want to be, but I am. But I say I'm the better looking one, so it works out. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I know I'm the better looking one, so it helps out. No, I'm the middle child. That's sick. It's, that explains a lot about me, though. Yeah, exactly. I didn't give a, you mean I gave nature a me complex. That's... Okay. As, you, as we've talked about, there's a lot of translational symmetry in these crystals. That makes them of use. We can use that property to talk about symmetry. However, we're going to need to talk a lot about symmetry and different classifications of symmetry. So the symmetry of crystals can be summarized or categorized by four different levels. We're going to go with more information. And less. The reason this exists is, is because since the dawn of time, people have always liked crystals and minerals and metals. And who's got the fluorite? Yeah, you do. So this is cut into a face, but you can cleave fluorite in specific patterns. And people found symmetries these ways. And they started looking at these crystals and going, oh, I can see the symmetry, the pattern with it. And they developed one classification. Then as we got um, better at understanding more and more about matter, we kind of moved up into greater classifications. And honestly, does anybody know really when we determined that uh, matter was made of small particles? Like what time frame? 
like very late 1800s, early 1900s. So like a little over 100 years ago, we had mathematical evidence that particles existed. And it wasn't until we started looking at Brownian motion and some other things, and then probably about 40-ish, 50 years later, we actually had experimental evidence to show that things were made of small particles. Many experiments, but Brownian motion was one of the biggest ones associated with it. And then uh, the gas laws helped contribute to figuring out that things are made of particles. And then we visually saw our, one of our first molecules with something called STM in the 70s. Like we, that's like the first time we took a picture. And now we have single atom fluorescence where we can use fluorescence spectroscopy to look at an individual atom or molecule, which is crazy. So the most information, the, we'll start with the, the least information that we can have. There are seven crystal systems. <laughs> That's one of the books I read about this stuff, makes constant parallels to Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. If you've ever watched that movie, if you haven't, you should. It's a great movie. Um, then we lead into 14 Bravais lattices. Then we move into 32 crystal classes. where we introduce more symmetry elements or more symmetry operations, and then we jump to 230 space groups. Eventually, you guys will need to know these. Not the 230 space groups. It's a very difficult thing. I do want to give you, um, we'll look at some um, crystallographic tables and some, some other illustrations of those. But this is how real crystallography is done because we can see atoms at this point in time. These are important to know because they'll to help us look at simple systems, understand those a bit better, and we can still infer onto these more complicated systems. Okay? Any questions about that right now? Okay. Before we can get here, though, we really have to understand unit cells very, very well and descriptors of unit cells. Am I okay to erase this? Okay. And why do we need all this symmetry? Well, it's very important in electronic structure or to know about the orbitals, how things are going to interact because symmetry elements permit certain actions to happen. When it comes to experiments, we completely exploit the symmetry. From a mathematical sense, the symmetry makes something that extends for infinity which seems impossible to deal with, possible to deal with. Okay, but it all starts at the unit cell. What's some things that we know about unit cells? Yeah, we're going to call it the smallest repeat unit. And extol. We'll introduce another type of cell, a Werner Seitz cell, which is, a, it kind of argues with that claim, but we don't need to worry about that right now. That's the smallest repeat unit, right? So we can translate this thing in any direction 
and does it change? No, it shouldn't. If it does, then we didn't pick the unit cell. We picked something else. So translates. all directions, x, y, and z. That results in the crystal. They're periodic. And what does that mean again for periodicity? Order. On the table. Order. What'd you say? They're on the table. They're on the table. Oh, yeah, it could be on the table. There's some followed pattern. I did like that, though. Um, and they're described by metrics. unit cell, and how many faces does each unit cell have? <laughs> okay. Let's talk about those, uh, those metrics. Oh, described by six metrics, sorry. We're going to start with Probably a cubic system again. Um, we might go to something called the triclinic system, where triclinic is the least amount of symmetry you can have in a crystal. To explain our point, though. Now, oh, Katie, erase this. Uh, we need we need more information. Do you mean like the geometric shape that that's sort of cut into? Yeah, so what, that's uh, icosahedron, right? No, octahedron, yeah, octahedron. Yeah. Now with something else. <laughs> no, it's a, fluorite is really hard to break. If you did, that would be impressed. But don't break it, please. <laughs> All right. Um, so we got six parameters utilized. To describe the cell. So let's think about, let's go with this unit cell. Yeah, I don't want the one in the center. This unit cell. And we don't really, like, we care about the atoms, but we're going to pretend that the atoms aren't going to be what we're using to describe this thing. How many, we have six parameters. What are those six parameters we will need to describe the shape of these wires together? You, we could do each of its faces, but that's really hard to describe that way, right? X, Y, Z, so we got axes, so those are the lattice vectors. So how many lengths? And we denote them with A, B, and C. Yep. So A is connected to which axis? Ouch. <laughs> B? Yep. C 
C is generally always up. X and Y you can rotate. Z or C is usually up. I'm sorry, what was that? It doesn't really matter. But by convention, you at least in with crystals, they're like, this is the way it is. Because there's many, because what ended up happening at the beginning was is people were arguing, no, it should be spaced here. Like, this is the way that the unit cell should look. No, this way, honestly, it doesn't really matter because there's translational symmetry. So everybody just said, this is it. Tall side, z-axis. What else do we need? Where are the three other parameters? So let's draw our unit cell. Shit, I made a cubic one. Oh well. Semi cubic. Okay, we got A, we got B, we got C. We'll try to draw them out with colors. So I got lengths. Could do atom placement. We don't want to talk about atom placement because we don't, we're going to pretend we don't even know atoms exist yet. Because they knew about unit cells. So angles matter or is it always just a cube? Angles matter. It's, it's actually very rare where it's just a cube. I unfortunately drew a cube. So we got three lengths and how many angles? Well, how many parameters do we have? Yeah, we got three. three well, we got six parameters, which means three angles. Is that angle or angel? Oh, uh, it's angle. Okay. There we go. Anybody know what symbols we give these angles? Yeah, go for it. Oh, yeah, we use that to show an angle, but I mean, what symbols do we give to specific? Nope, that's for rotational stuff and spherical systems. Yep. Alpha, beta, gamma. Okay. Alpha. Alpha is the angle between what two lattice parameters or what two lattice lengths? Nope. Nope. Yep. Beta. A and C. And gamma, I don't hate it as much anymore. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to attempt to draw out those angles on here. Okay, alpha is for between B and C, right? There's alpha. What other color? We got pink. Beta. Beta is between which two axes? And then we'll use this ugly color. Gamma, where do I need that one? Yep. Okay. So that gives us all those different angles. You can use that to describe the shape of any unit cell you see. Oh, shit. My alarm didn't go off. All right. One last thing. The stoichiometry has to be conserved also. So if you have a molecular formula like sodium chloride, 
if you reduce down all the atoms on the inside, like to get to just whole common factors, stoichiometry is conserved. Okay, we're over time right now, sorry about that. Next time, what we're going to do is, is we're going to see if we have a crystal of a certain size, can we actually represent infinity with that? Your daily problem will have to look, deal with looking at crystals and determining those parameters, okay? Yep, any questions? Uh, 